has been uh, em embedded uh, in my mayoral briefings. And it's been a unified command approach. It has been embedded in the EOC that is fully activated. What we know is Ida is a 155 miles per hour category four hurricane. No sightseeing, this is very serious. We need you to stay in from this point forward all morning, all afternoon, all evening. As it relates to Monday morning, we should see some signs uh, that we're moving out of this, but you are not uh, to come out until you receive more information from the city of New Orleans. Now is the time that we have been preparing for and even waiting for as it relates to Hurricane Ida. Again, this is the time. Heed all warnings. Ensure that you shelter in place, you hunker down. We understand that we have residents that are now without power. We do understand that wind miles are over 35 miles per hour, which means that there will be no action, no activity from Intergy New Orleans at this time. Also, as it relates to other responses, the New Orleans Fire Department, we are now on emergency alert. As it relates to 911 calls, you will hear more from our leaders following me. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to ask Colin Arnold, our Director of Homeland Security, to come forth. We'll move through, trying to be as fast as possible again so that everyone can get out of harm's way. Thank you. Colin? Morning. We've talked for several days. We've gone over this. This is this is short and sweet. Hurricane Ida is here. Tropical storm winds have arrived. As Ida moves closer, it is near certainly that we will see sustained winds of 75 miles in, uh, um, per hour or higher, up to 110 miles per hour in New Orleans. Let me be clear: these are life-threatening winds. They will cause down power lines, structure damage, down trees, and projectiles absolutely need to be indoors for the remainder of this storm. Hunker down and stay put. We'll be with you through the storm. Text NOLA READY to 77295 for text alerts so you know what's going on throughout the rest of the day. Please understand that public safety officials will likely not be able to respond during dangerous conditions. This will likely include overnight when storm impacts have passed, but debris will still be blocking the road roadways. It's dangerous now. It's going to be dangerous this afternoon, even more so because of the wind. It's going to be extremely dangerous overnight because of the wind and because of darkness. They're not going to be able to come to you. You need to stay inside until tomorrow. We'll look at this at the first light of day. Our emergency operations center is activated. We've got 70 people up there. They're risking COVID. They're communicating. They're communicating with everyone outside that is working this. It includes infrastructure, transportation, and human service agencies. We are coordinating response efforts. This will include immediate public safety needs throughout the duration of the storm, but as I said, there's nobody coming right now. You need to stay inside. This will also include response efforts that will begin tomorrow. When we come out tomorrow, we can look at this, take an assessment, figure out where we're at, search and rescue operations, potential post-storm evacuations. We can deal with all that, but now is not that time. Now is the time to stay inside. More information will be made possible through every medium that we have, including the media, primarily the media, when we can do that. The most important thing is to stay inside. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. Ramsey Green, Deputy CEO of the Thank you. Thank you uh, so much, Mayor. Um, you know, to our residents who are both here uh, and outside of our city, uh, it's important to acknowledge our city, again, is in a very different place than it was 16 years ago today. Our levy system, or what we call the HISTER system, is strong. It's unprecedented. It is, um, if not the most powerful, protected system in the planet, it is certainly one of the top uh, of them in the planet, in the, in, in the country, excuse me, in the planet. Um, this is a system that you know, we've done a tremendous amount of data. 
the folks from both levy authorities, the Army Corps of Engineers, they have great confidence and we share that confidence. So water coming from outside of the city, um, penetrating the levy system is not, a, is not a huge concern. It's not a concern of ours right now. Um, what our concern mostly is, as it relates to flooding, is rainfall cells hitting above our city within the levee system and inundating our city with a high rate of rain. What that, that is water that we cannot protect ourselves from a levee. That is water that falls within our city. At the moment, and Lauren will go over this, we're projected to potentially reach 15 to 20 inches of rain over the period of today and into tomorrow, at times exceeding a rainfall rate of three inches per hour, which greatly exceeds our existing uh, drainage ability. What that means is we would see flooding in this city along public right-of-ways, uh, in places where water typically congregates, low-lying areas, etc. St again, stay away, stay safe, wait for that water to go away, wait for it to get pumped out of our city. We had some great news thanks to the incredibly hard-working, dedicated men and women of the Sewage and Water Board. Turbine 4 came back on late last night, so we now at the moment have 72 megawatts or thereabouts of total power dedicated to the sewage and water board, around 50 plus megawatts of self-generated power. Again, it's an incredibly fragile system. That system can change at any point. And what we um, uh, always have to be prepared for that. Finally, the sewage and water board, the sewer system is entirely uh, dependent upon pumping. And what we're seeing, um, and thanks to Entergy, they've dedicated 10 generators to ensure our sewage system keeps moving throughout this. We have a tremendous number of people throughout uh, this city who are at home and they're going to use those systems. And until we give you any additional information, you're good to go in using your water, your sewage systems at home. Stay inside. This city uh, knows how to deal with this. We've had 16 years since Hurricane Katrina to invest billions of dollars into our exterior protection from uh, coastal inundation. Rainfall, rate of rainfall, that is our real flooding concern at the moment. Um, Entergy New Orleans has dedicated over 4,000 uh, out-of-state contractors who are pre-positioned throughout the region, um, and they are ready to respond to uh, loss of power. So our big threats right now from the infrastructure side are loss of power, flooding in certain parts that you have seen before when we have an excessive rate of rain throughout this city, um, but we have great, great confidence. All of the histories, let me add two more things, I'm sorry. Uh, the Hister system, all of the gates were closed at about midnight last night. The last gates were closed at midnight, and the outfall pumping stations, the, the, pump, the PCCPs that pump water out of our city into Lake Pontchartrain are active and moving. Again, thank you so much to the folks at the Flood Authorities, the United States Army Corps of Engineers. We have great confidence in any water from coming from out of this city into it. It's the real concern of the water that falls within our city. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. And we're going to keep it uh, going. Dr. Jennifer Begdow. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll just be brief. I want to reiterate what's been said. Now is the time to stay where you are. Our health care system, our hospitals are hunkering down. They are caring for the patients that are within their walls. Our first responders will be unable to get to you. Please do not try to access a healthcare or a hospital facility right now. We will be there for you when the storm passes, but the safest thing you can do is to stay put. Please make sure that you have a plan for your elderly and vulnerable residents or family members, neighbors that are in your immediate space. Make sure that they are being cared for throughout the duration of the storm. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Avegno. And I also need to add, as I've been recently informed, that residents as well as visitors and hotels all throughout the city at this time, we are asking for water conservation. Water conservation is needed at this time and throughout the rest of the morning, throughout the afternoon, throughout the evening. More information will come as we receive it. And thank you so much. I'm going to now bring up Chief Ferguson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, currently, right now, uh, New Orleans Police Department is operating at 100% all hands on deck, 12-hour uh, shifts. Uh, at some point in time, as Kyla mentioned earlier, we will have to hunker down, which means that will impact our response. Uh, so we are asking you to please, please, right now, hunker down yourselves. 
Do not put ourselves, do not put our fire department, do not put our EMS in harm's way. As you're putting yourselves in harm's way. Now is the time, and over the next 24 hours, perhaps, we need to, uh, you know, just hunker down. Um, I will say also, we are prepared to assist whatever recovery efforts we would have to uh, assist with after this, but also anti-looting. We will not permit, we will not allow any looting throughout this process, and, and we will be out there to enforce that. So as I'm asking and begging and pleading with you, please hunker down now, as we will have to hunker down at some point in time ourselves when we will not be able to respond. But as soon as we are able to do so, as conditions improve, we will be able to do so. But please, right now, do your due diligence. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. Thank you so much. Uh, Director Morris. Thank you, Mayor. At 10 a.m. this morning, OPCD advised the public of an intermittent 911 outage that we were experiencing calls coming to the center uh, that would begin to drop. Uh, we've engaged our technology partners and our state and federal regulators to ensure um, that 911 service uh, could qu quickly restored. I'm happy to report about 10 minutes after the reported outage, 911 service in the city of New Orleans has been fully restored at this time. Um, so again, 911 is for life-threatening emergencies only. Um, at this point, I've been speaking in the past two days about that point when public safety responses uh, will be reduced or altered. We are at that point. All the public safety agencies at this point are making decisions when or will they will not, no longer respond. So if you call 911, the call taker may be telling you we will see you or get to you when it is safe. That does not mean after the storm is over. The moment that our public safety agencies get an opportunity to safely get to you, they will try their best to do so. But please only call us when you absolutely have an emergency. Please don't call 911 also because you, you didn't evacuate and now you want someone to come get you. I'm sorry, we're past that point. Our advice to you now is get to a shelter in place and protect yourself indoors. Do not be outside. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now I have to bring up Colonel Bailey. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Colonel Bailey from the Louisiana National Guard. Uh, your National Guard is trained and ready to respond, uh, and we're here with you uh, here in the city of New Orleans on the ground. I have 260 Army and Air National Guardsmen. Uh, those members are staged and stationed throughout the city uh, to respond to activities and requirements uh, immediately after the storm as soon as it's safe. As it relates to our equipment, uh, we have boat teams, high water rescue vehicles, security uh, forces in accordance uh, with uh, or in support of uh, NOPD. We have uh, also, uh, in the event they're needed after the storm, we have helicopters and aviation to follow on on search and rescue uh, as soon as they can fly, and that'll probably be on tomorrow. We're working with the mayor and her staff to facilitate an after the storm, after the event, evacuation and onward integration from MC, from MC, MCC for those who wish to evacuate. And, and I'll close with this very quickly. We're here and we're with you, uh, with your friends, your relatives, your neighbors. Uh, I, myself, the rest of the Louisiana National Guard, we value every one of you. You all matter and we're going to protect what matters. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you, Colonel Warren. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, in terms of the weather, everything's pretty much already been reiterated here. You know, potential for sustained winds 74 to 110 miles an hour, possibly higher gusts, flooding 15 to 20 inches. Uh, currently, the storm is in the process of moving on sh on shore. I guess you could call it that in Port Fouchon and Grand Isle. So, it should be making landfall down there very shortly. Water levels down there are rapidly rising. Wind speeds are also rapidly rising. In terms of winds in the city. We're already seeing 50 to 70 mile per hour gusts. Um, so we are basically there for hurricane force wind gusts right now as 11.45 a.m. We're seeing sustained 30 to 40 miles per hour, some more. For those of you in the building, we can hear it outside the windows right now. So as we see it, as everybody else has been saying, it's only going to get worse from here. Hunker down, be careful, be safe, and we will just be safe after the storm as well if you have generators. The winds will be slow to come down tonight into the overnight hours, and just be prepared for anything at this point. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Lauren. Uh, as Ramsey indicated during his briefing that Intergy New Orleans is on the ready to respond to the needs of our community, particularly right now. That need is with the Sewage and Water Board, and the necessary responses are being done right now. Um, also, what I would say to our residents, be calm, 
in the midst of this storm. You can be calm. You have everything that you need. We will get through this together. So be prepared. Stay where you are. Continue to heed the messages that come throughout the city of New Orleans. But we will get through this together. The best thing that I will say at this time is knowing that we have the leadership that is in place on all sides. And I'm very confident in the presence of our New Orleans City Council standing with us as well as they have always been. Now, I would ask for Council Member Helene Moreno, who serves as our president, to just represent the council at this time. Council Member. Thank you so much, uh, Mayor. I would just uh, reiterate, you know, stay home. This is the time to, to hunker down. Uh, as you all know, the New Orleans City Council is the regulator of Energy New Orleans, so I've been in close contact with its CEO, Deanna Rodriguez. As the mayor has mentioned, she is, and along with her team, all hands on deck on the sewage and water board situation. Uh, preliminary reports, it, it appears that it's something um, on the ENO side that they're trying to rectify and, and, and restore power uh, on that route. So. That's, that's really the latest that I've got. Of course, we'll continue to keep you updated and just stay safe and stay home. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. And for the sake of time and for your safety, we'll answer um, a few questions and Allison. David Hammer, WWL. Yes, sir. I think we need some clarity on the situation with the sewage and water board power. Is it correct that they've lost power to run the sewage with pumps? And, it, and you talked about water conservation, and at one point you said go ahead and use your water and sewer, and then at another point you said conserve water. Because we just got information. Exactly. Yeah. So on the front end, as Ramsey was giving his update on the infrastructure, talking <coughs> both sewage and water board as well as energy, we were notified of a power outage relative to the energy New Orleans side of the operation, just as confirmed by Council Member Moreno. Uh, those matters we know have compromised as it relates to the sewer system. That's where the request for water conservation came into play. That still remains active at this particular time. Ramsey, anything you need to add? You can do so now. Yeah, real quick. Um, so, yeah, David, we were, just got that, which is why those ENO generators are being deployed. Hopefully we'll, we'll get through it, but I think a, a, for our residents, a, an overwhelming uh, approach to this storm, if you don't need to use water, don't use it for the moment. Okay. For the moment, if you don't need to use water, be, just be conservative with it. Thank you, Mayor. One more thing. Yes. Uh, and David, just a little bit more information that I'm getting from Entergy. It could be potentially a substation that's out, potentially a breaker issue. The winds are really high, but um, you know, Entergy is trying to get some crews out there to figure out if they can if they can figure out the situation. Um, but of course, they have to do that safely. So there's it's still kind of in the investigation. So as we learn more, we will share. Okay, right? Be as transparent as we need to be, because that's how we are. Next question, Peyton Trist, WGNO. A lot of people have evacuated and heeded the warning, and then a lot of people are going to want to go outside after the storm. When are you telling people to? it's going to be safe to come back, and when it will be safe to go back outside to check on their property? Sure, when we have assessed the situation, and after doing so, we will inform the public. Until that point, stay inside. We, again, will investigate. Um, the good news is that this storm uh, should be nearing uh, completion in the early morning, so by day. And so that is on our side because immediately we will be able to go out and assess. But only after a thorough assessment by public safety officials across the board People are supposed to stay put until otherwise notified. Next question, Tim Craig, Washington Post. Uh, I thank you. Um, and you don't need to explain the whole levy system again, but I think a lot around the country, a lot of people may be wondering, why are you so confident in the, that the levy system will hold in this case? They were, they were rebuilt as Category 5 levies, but we're almost at a Category 5 hurricane. We're just a couple miles short. So if you just briefly say why this confidence that there's no water from the outside going to be coming into the city through the newly built levees. And then also one follow-up question, could you just also clarify that your hospitals, many of them are very full because of the COVID situation, do they all have generators and backup energy supplies that that's not going to become an issue with power goes out? 
Sure. So on the front end of that question relative to our levy protection system, uh, billions of dollars, over $14 billion has been invested uh, in our levy protection system. We have more technology and science in terms of its advancement that gives us the comfort and the confidence that's needed to ensure that those who are inside the levy protection system will not be compromised. Of course, as we move through this, this hurricane, we will learn more. Right? But at this time, that's where our focus is, in the city of New Orleans, in the state of Louisiana. We appreciate the concern nationally, but right now, our focus is on our people, right now. Ramsey, anything you need to add? Yeah, um, you know, I, I, I appreciate the question, but, you know, we in this city have had um, 16 years since Hurricane Katrina to understand the evolving changes between the human built environment and the changing climate and the changing environment and thanks to 16 billion plus um, of federal taxpayer dollars um, great science great uh, analytics um, we are really confident that the levy system as constructed now is we're, we're not confident we factually know and much like this city has run covid um, our covid response embracing data and science um, we're very confident that that levy system, which as a community, this city went through a lot of very strategic changes from the management of it, from the way people are on the board and all of those things, to make it focused on data, science, and logic. And that system um, is incredibly strong. Um, I've been to the Netherlands, I've seen what they have. The Netherlands use our advisors um, for, for some of the construction we've done for HISDERS. We're very confident in a way um, that we have never, as a as a community, been before. Um, it's a different uh, it's a different time. It's a different place, and we've had 16 years to really um, protect our, our city from what occurred tragically um, on this day 16 years ago. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And, and just to the hospital piece, you know, again, kind of echoing this theme, there's no one more prepared in the healthcare system in America than our hospital because they all went through Katrina. They have incredibly sophisticated emergency preparedness plans that they get to exercise on a regular basis because this is not our first threat in the last 16 years. Um, they all have generators. They test the generators. Um, they will utilize the generators even when they deem that it's necessary. And so again, I can say this from personal experience um, as well as professionally, the hospitals are prepared. Thank you, Dr. Vegno. Allison? That's it. Thank you all uh, so much. And you should know that our unified command will continue to be in place. Uh, direct communication with the White House has been has happened, and we do uh, and will continue with that direct line and link, as well as our Secretary of FEMA. Thank you all so much. Be safe, and uh, we will give you updates as we need to. Thank you.